Okay, so here we have a nice little XY plane and a nice little sketch, a little figure of a house here. And it uh, looks like we have a little ladder leaning up against this house. And the question is, we want to find the length of the ladder. And in order to do that, we're going to have to use uh, two pieces of information. We have this coordinate, which is the uh, location of the top of the ladder, and this coordinate, which is the location of the bottom of the ladder. So if you think you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. But if you're taking any sort of uh, algebra course, you're definitely going to have to know how to handle a problem like this. And we're going to be talking about a special formula okay, that all of you definitely need to know. And if you think you know what that formula is, actually type that into the comment section as well. But uh, I'm going to show you the solution to this in one moment. And then, of course, I'm going to walk, you, uh, walk through it step by step. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. It's my passion to teach math. And I'll tell you right now, all of you can be successful in mathematics. Uh, but it requires two things. One, you kind of have the will to want to learn math. That's the first thing. But the second thing you need is great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you need help in your current math course, or maybe you're studying for, um, studying for some sort of special exam or test, something like the SAT, ACT, ASVAB, teacher certification exam, uh, something with a math section on it, or if you homeschool, Check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that cover these categories and much, much more. Also, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. Hopefully, you're taking your own awesome math notes. But if you need something to study from, uh, check out my math notes. It's super detailed and comprehensive. And uh, if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you the solution, and then we'll go ahead and get into actually how, how I got that answer. So uh, how or what is the length of the ladder? Okay, so we're looking for this distance right here. Okay, so this is what we want, the length uh, from here to here. What is that length? Well, here it is. It's the square root of 45, but you wouldn't want to uh, leave your answer like that. Okay, if you got the square root of 45, I would kind of accept that, but really you want to kind of reduce or simplify that radical to 3 square root of 5. And uh, square root of 5 is also, if you uh, actually used your calculator, is approximately 6.7008. Uh, so I'm really kind of looking for these two. But if you got uh, square root of 45 or this or this, well, I'm going to go ahead and give you full credit and a nice little happy face, an A plus 100% and a few stars so you can have an extra special day. Nice job, okay? Now, let me just talk real quick. Anytime you have a radical, like the square root of 45, you always have to ask, hey, is this thing fully simplified? It's very much like reducing a fraction. Like if you had uh, your answer is 100 over 300, would you turn that in uh, to your teacher as your final answer? No, you would always want to reduce that down to, uh, uh, for example, in this case, one third, okay? And that's not like an optional thing. You're like, ah, I just didn't feel like uh, reducing this down. Take my uh, right answer. It's right, it's technically right, and I'm not gonna simplify it. I'm not gonna clean it up for you. Well, no, that's not uh, you know the way to go in terms of mathematics. Uh, matter of fact, most math teachers are going to, um, you know, take off a good amount of points. But anyways, I don't want to get too um, off track in terms of what to do here. But any, when you're working with square roots, okay, as we are in this particular problem, you always need to be on high alert about simplifying radicals. Okay, so let's get into the actual problem right now. So here we go. Okay, so what we're going to need is this formula right here. Okay, so we're, tr we're looking for distance. Okay. And we're looking for distance between two points on the xy plane. This point here, this coordinate, which is 4, 2, and this coordinate here. So the way we calculate distance between two coordinates, two points on the xy plane, is this lovely formula here called the distance formula. And let's just go ahead and uh, review it right now. So the distance is equal to the entire square root of the following. And this right here is x minus x minus x1 squared plus y minus y1 squared. Basically, all we're going to do is uh, find the differences of the x values. Now, remember, 
A point on the xy plane is what we call an ordered pair. It's x, y. It's a pair of numbers and are in a particular order. x comes first and y is second. So for example, the point 4, 2, this, uh, and there's kind of a lot of different names you could use. This could be a coordinate. This could be a point. This is also an order pair. But basically, you just need to know that that first number is x and that second number is y. So the distance formula is saying, uh, find the difference of the x's. And, and the great thing about the distance formula is because you're going to be squaring this, uh, you don't really have to pay attention to the order as you do with the slope formula, for example. So here are the x's, 10 and um, uh, 4. So we're going to subtract those. It will square those. That will be that part of the problem. And then here, we're going to find the differences of the y's. So that would be 2 and 5, right? So we find the differences of the y's, square them. So we're going to add up the results of doing this, and then we're going to take the square root of that whole thing. So don't let this formula, you know, intimidate you in terms of like, oh, this looks very complex. No, not that complex. Just need to understand what it's saying to you. But let's go ahead and plug in the numbers now. And uh, let's go ahead and see the result of doing that. Okay, let me just kind of erase some of this here so you can kind of follow along. As you can see, I already kind of did the work in advance, but... Here, the differences of the x's are going to be 4 and 10. Now, I could write 10 minus 4 or 4 minus 10. If I write 4 minus 10, I'm going to end up with a negative 6. Here, uh, 10 minus 4 is a positive 6. But even if you ended up with a negative 6, when you square it, you're still going to get a positive number. Okay, So that's why you don't have to really worry about the order when it comes to the distance formula. So the distance is going to be equal to the square root of the differences of the x's. And the differences of the y's is 2 and 5. So we'll write that as 5 minus 2 squared. So now we, uh, all we have to do is figure this out right there. All right, so 10 minus 4 squared, that's going to be 6 squared. 5 minus 2 is 3, and we're going to square that. So we're down to the square root of 6 squared plus 3 squared. We've got to figure this out here. So 6 squared is what? 6 times 6 is 36. 3 squared is uh, 3 times 3, which is 9. So we have the square root of 36 plus 9, and of course, that is the square root of 45. So um, kind of like the point I was making earlier, a lot of you would be so excited, be like, oh, awesome. I used a distance formula. I knew exactly what to do. Here is my answer. Again, you want to slow down because uh, most math teachers, let's say this uh, question was worth 10 points. If you turn in this as your final answer, you might get like 9 out of 10 or 8 out of 10 because you didn't fully simplify your radical. And that might make a lot of you look like this. You know, you'd be like, what are you talking about? You know, I got the right answer. No, teacher, you're wrong. I'm right. Da, 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 da. Listen, I'm telling you right now, I've been doing this a long time. And I know, um, you know, your math teachers out there are going to take points off, right? This is not fully simplified. So you need to simplify it down. So how do we do that? Well, we got the square root of 45. So you want to be looking for perfect square factors. And this is a whole nother topic, but basically perfect squares are numbers like 4, 9, 16, 25, things that we could take uh, the square root of uh, and you can end up with a nice little whole number uh, value. So here I'm like, okay, is there any perfect square factors of 45? Yes, 9, right? So 9 times 5 is 45. And what you could do on property of square roots is you can separate your big square root into two or more smaller square roots. In other words, we could just uh, take the uh, square root of the individual numbers like this. So we have the square root of 9 times this square root of 5. So kind of speaking in real general terms here, um, I'll give you some suggestions if you need to kind of more formally learn this. But hopefully you understand what I'm doing here. Now I can go ahead and simplify that, uh, this perfect square. The square root of 9 is 3, okay? So that's what I was trying to do is get that uh, perfect square out of there. So now I have 3 times the square root of 5. So the square root of 45 is 3 times the square root of 5. That would be the correct answer uh, written uh, in terms of square roots or radicals. But if you wanted to get an actual sense of the, the distance, you can just simply go into your calculator, take the square root of 45, and that's going to be approximately 6.708. I'm just kind of rounding off with the decimals, and there you go. Okay. Now, the distance formula is kind of a um, uh, an offtake of the Pythagorean theorem. So some of you might have been thinking, well, can I use a squared plus b squared? equals c squared. Well, actually, uh, you were basically using the Pythagorean theorem, but when we're doing um, the Pythagorean theorem, and by the way, if you don't know what the Pythagorean theorem is, it's solving the lengths of a right triangle. 
Okay, so this is really the foundation of the distance formula, how we have the distance formula, because right here is, uh, you really can't see it right here because my uh, figure's all messed up. Let me see if I can raise some of this right so we can talk about this. And this will be the last thing before we wrap up this video. But basically, if you look here, we have a triangle and up against this house, we actually have a right triangle right here. So this would be like my A, this would be like my B, and this would be like my C. So I'm solving for C, okay, with A squared plus uh, B squared is equal to C squared. And I can easily find out what A is and B is because uh, these are just simply these X coordinates, right? So here, this is four, uh, and right there, this would be what, 10. So I could find the difference there, that's six, all right? And I could do the same thing here. We could see, oh, this is three. And if I do that, I would still get the same answer. So the distance formula, uh, you know, is related uh, from, or uh, related to, directly related to, to the Pythagorean theorem. So these are two formulas you absolutely need to master, not only in geometry, but in algebra as well. Okay, so if you need um, additional help with the distance formula or midpoint formula or Pythagorean theorem, anything, you know, uh, that involves uh, what we call analytic geometry, let me give you a couple suggestions. One, um, I do teach this in my pre-algebra and algebra one courses. And of course, if you really want to get into some heavy duty geometry, uh, check out like my full geometry course. And if you really want to get into advanced analytical geometry, then you want to check out like my pre-calculus course. That's definitely a lot of fun because that is super advanced mathematics. Um, and of course, that's getting ready, uh, getting uh, those of you ready to take calculus. But if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.